Welcome to the DCC Museum. supposed to be on yet it's give me a minute wow no this is a step up most people are only used to seeing me on a smartphone screen that's if you've seen me at all my name is matt taylor and a few people out there may know me from my youtube channel techmoan and I'm honoured to be here today at least virtually to announce today's guest speakers I can see that everyone in the audience there looks very smart, but just a quick word to those gentlemen who opted to go for the clip-on bow tie rather than one that you tie yourselves. 
don't feel bad about it. You made the right decision. Trust me, I thought I'd go for one that you could tie yourself. I've never used one of those before, so I looked on YouTube, tried to figure out how to do it. This is what happened. I might have lost my temper with it a little bit at the end there, but it just shows that you can't learn everything off YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, delivering today's keynote speech, the youngest member of Team DCC, whose greatest benefit and sometimes challenge is actually living in the DCC Museum, from Redondo Beach, California, Carly Porankiewicz. Evaluating our past is the key to a successful future. We are taught as children to analyze the course of our past and point out its follies and flaws in hopes to better the outcome of our future. Music, one of the most influential and reoccurring parts of history, is an important aspect of every culture and every individual's life. Everything we hear and enjoy today through music streaming apps and websites has been developed from previous eras of music and technology. Many only judge the DCC for its short lifespan in music's history, but in reality, it still lives on today. DCC is the grandfather of modern world MP3, and it has led to the creation of most modern forms of digital audio. As a teenager, music is one of the most important parts of my life as well. I listen to music in my room, on the bus, with my friends, in between class, basically everywhere. Although the genres and technology have changed, I, or the ideas remain the same. I have a music system in my room, so often at night when I'm doing my homework or calling my friends, I listen to music as well. The funny thing about it is that it's always my mom who comes in my room to tell me to turn it down. It reminds me of the stories my dad would tell me of his youth, how every time he would buy a new vinyl record, his, he would play them so much in his room that his mom would go insane. My dad and I have a lot in common, and I honestly have no complaints about that. We share a similar taste in music, so much so that when I started listening to the Beatles a few years ago, I played the song so often that he grew fond of them too, especially after our Paul McCartney concert earlier this month. I've also gained a lot from sitting behind the camera during these interviews. It's been really rewarding and humbling to see such brilliant people share their views and truths. When listening to Mr. Yantimo during his interview, he mentioned that it's magnificent and surprising to see something of his past now, and um, something that he never expected to make such an impact on his daily life. This resonates with me personally because I've come to realize that this documentary has now become a part of my past, and maybe I'll be confronted with it someday as well. Moral of the story is, the DCC and its music quality has weaved its way through today's generation, and although we don't see it in the typical cassette format anymore, it still exists on today. DCC, there is still music left to write. In 2017, he released the first new album on digital compact cassette in 21 years. Since then, he's been the driving force behind every new DCC release. From Wisconsin, USA, musician and format fanatic, Jeremy Hyden. Hello everyone. As you heard, and some of you may already know, I'm Jeremy Hyden. I'm a recording artist and a radio show host. I own a record label, Causing Change Media, in Wisconsin, USA. My label specializes in audiophile prestige releases made with the highest quality materials possible. Each title in our artist roster is released on almost every format possible. And thanks to meeting Ralph a few years ago by a chance eBay listing, the Philips Digital Compact Cassette became part of the official format roster for CCM. I had the honor of having my album Blue Wicked released on DCC in 2017, making that title the first commercial release of the format that is seen in almost 25 years. After the excitement of that, following uh, Ralph and I worked on the second format, specific release, the CCM Pop Rock Recording Artist Sergeant 606. This anniversary reissue exclusive was only released on DCC to the DCC Museum. I'm thrilled to announce a third release on digital compact cassette, 
exclusively released, available only on DCC for this museum. The release will feature the folk pop singer-songwriter Angela Lashley and her definitive hits collection, Run Girl Run. It will be available in September with a limited edition of 100 copies. You can order it directly from digitalcompactcassette.com. The DCC format was ahead of its time by a company that's used to creating the future. Philips has been a part of my life far greater depth than I even realized until I got involved in this project with Ralph. I grew up on a dairy farm surrounded by technology that Philips has made better and affordable. Radios and portable stereo systems I used as a growing up to a young adult being able to buy televisions, the CD Interactive, and movies, and uh, present day with the Philips Hue lighting through my house that I control with a smartphone inside and out, as well as my electric razor and a toothbrush that I use every single day. <laughs> Philips is also looking ahead into the future, making the medical equipment that will maintain and save lives. There isn't much that this remarkable company can't do and hardly any part of modern life that they aren't perfecting. I'm just blown away that I get to be part of this documentary that I'm about to see for the very first time with all of you. I can't believe that I get to stand here on this beautiful venue in, from the company that created it all. Uh, now, if you would indulge me in taking a selfie for uh, somebody that's very special to me, um, if you could all, on the count of three, say, hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Thank you so much, and um, it's a real pleasure to speak with you, and it's been an amazing journey so far with Ralph, and there really is a lot of music left to write. The last speaker of this afternoon is your host and the curator of the DCC Museum in Los Angeles. His passion for DCC originating in his garage where he would repair players for fun has blossomed into a specialised museum almost overnight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ralph Porankiewicz. Hello and welcome everyone. Storytellers of the DCC documentary, current and former employees of Philips, fans across the globe, patrons of the DCC Museum, and friends and family members. Today is a fantastic day. 23 years after Philips had to throw in the towel, the truth and final story about the digital compact cassette, or DCC, is about to be released. I wasn't necessarily an early adopter. I was young and ignorant, you have to forgive me. In 1992, I was everything CD rather than DCC. It wasn't until years later, after seeing Tecmo's YouTube video, that my eyes were finally opened. How could I have missed out on that technology? I bought a couple of players on Mark Plots that were supposedly restored, and when they arrived, they, I got burned. They weren't working, so I had to dust off the old soldering iron, and I repaired both of them, and a new passion was born. Ever since then, Multiple thousand pieces of equipment have been shipped through a company very close to here called US Tech, and it's run by the Bulls family. They've been doing all our transports ever since. But mostly, most of the people in the audience I have transformed, willingly or unwillingly often, uh, into mules uh, by asking you to help us transport players, tapes, and because of you, U.S. Border Patrol and Customs knows now more about DCC than they did in the early 90s in the United States. <laughs> in 2015, a couple of enthusiasts came together in Los Angeles and the DCC Museum was born. I became we. There was a passion across the globe. And we asked the community, what is it that we can help you with? What is it that you need? And they gave us two things. They need help with preservation and reparation and documentation of the equipment and also 
can you please release new music so we don't have to listen to just 90s materials? So this is when the DCC Museum was, was born. Our motto is keep the format alive, and that is what we have been doing ever since. Then we got lucky in 2017. You've just heard Jeremy, he contacted us, and because working with Causing Change gives us access to a lot of artists, and because of that, we are able to release new music every day um, since then. And we can no longer call it that format because it's still alive. Most DCC fans today actually knew very little about the DCC technology in 1992, and that's all because of social media. So why a documentary? Living in the United States as a Dutchman often gives me a different perspective on things. The down-to-earth attitude that we so graciously embrace here in the Netherlands, do maar gewoon, dan doe je gek genoeg, really doesn't fly very well in the United States, as most of you know. Uh, if you compare that to Apple, they fill a museum with lesser known innovation or even flops because they say they're proud of that because it led, led them to anything i-related, iPhone, iMac, iPod. But it wasn't until I officially received the 50th anniversary of the Machusta audio book uh, done by Techniques, where they explain 50 years of history of their involvement in the audio world. And with great pride, they leave out formats like El Cassette and the Digital Compact Cassette. This was the moment when we decided to set the record straight. We have worked nearly two years on this documentary. At first, not everybody was willing or able to do it. There were many personal boundaries. Bram Hogendorn even said, DCC is dead and buried to me. And he really meant it. He gave me 10 minutes on the phone. But most people, because of the boundaries, were unaware of what was happening since 2014. In the slipstream of vinyl and the analog cassette, DCC made a comeback. And because of that enthusiasm, one person after another decided to work with us on the documentary. As a matter of fact, uh, Peter Erdevries would have been proud because a lot of them turned into investigative journalists themselves and helped us and became mini documentary makers as well. Another interesting thing is that I was, of course, not a Philips man. A Philips man requires much more than the one-year tenure that I have unofficially had at Philips at one point. It requires a lot longer tenure. Working two years with most of you has given me a lot of insight of what it truly means to be a Philips man. And I couldn't be more proud to present the documentary in the former capital of innovation, the city of Eindhoven, here today with you. As a resident of the self-proclaimed entertainment capital of the world, Los Angeles, I've always promised uh, my friends that, I would always, that would, at some point I would bring a little bit of Hollywood here to you today. And we, start, we started that with the beautiful banner that you have seen uh, outside, which is a part of the museum. And I would like to continue with showing you the original six-minute short release film uh, done in 1992 by Philips, uh, releasing the DCC format with a small modern twist. I mean you, yes you. We are all interested in the future. For that is where you and I will spend the rest of our lives. You are here because you are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That's why you are here. You have traveled a great distance to... That's really terrifying. And now, 
for the first time we are bringing you the full report of what lies ahead. We cannot keep this a secret any longer. Y'all ready for this? Ubiquity may be ignored, but it will always be there. We will become like blind, furious particles. And now listen carefully, my friends, when I say to you that eternity will be encased in a plastic box. Perfect silence, pregnant with possibility. It is the noise of our desire, the hum of history, the evidence of absence. And now, I'd like for us to share a moment of perfect digital silence. Chaotic, beaming infosphere of the future. Data of every description will pervade our consciousness. Holograms projected beneath our eyelids. Direct retinal stimulation. That's lasted through the ages. My name is Musetta Vander, and it was such a pleasure to work on the Philips DCC commercial back in the day with Udo Kier and Mark Romanek. It was very exciting when you two selected that little piece where I morphed from Udo into myself for their concert. And it was such an honor to be part of that. Likewise, it is very exciting to now see the revival of the DCC technology and be part of this wonderful documentary. I hope you enjoy it. And DCC, there's still music left to write. Direct retinal stimulation. All too recently, I had a strange dream of luminous blue statistics. Some say that déjà vu is merely nostalgia for the future. <laughs> Tomorrow will overwhelm us with a spectrum of overabundance that's only barely imagined to us today. <laughs> My friends, I'm speaking of a future where the past will be mutated. Memories encased in perfect plastics. Complex reminiscence converted into zeros and ones. Ones and zeros? I mean. What is it that we fear most, my friends? I will tell you. We are afraid that the future will be boring. <laughs> Remember, my friends, future events like this will affect you in the future. One thing is certain. The future will be a place where nothing will seem familiar, where your knowledge will not apply, where there can be no salvation. Beware, my friends, of the future.
Musetta Vander was awesome. She uh, lives fairly close to us in, in Hollywood and uh, through the research program of many of our volunteers that I you know, cannot say thank you enough, we found her. Not only did she have the original master tape because she was notorious of, of preserving stuff like most of you in the audience. And um, so she presented the master tape and um, about an hour before she came to the scheduled interview at the, the DCC Museum in Redondo Beach, I came up with the idea of maybe asking her to be put in front of a green screen so we could morph the current Musetta into the 1992 video and talk a little bit about herself. But our green screen was nowhere to be found. It turned out that I had lent it to a colleague, so it was in Florida, so it was nowhere near to be found. So what do you do then? I, in case of emergencies, I always have a backup. It's my beautiful wife, Ilona, today here in the audience, and I asked her, do we have anything green? Anything green? She said, well, you're sleeping on it. So be aware that this entire interview is shot in front of our bed sheets. <laughs> they were clean. I, my wife asked me to remind you of that. And, um, but even Musetta could laugh uh, about it. So what's, uh, what's next? It's actually um, a thing on my mind, which quite a few of you asked today. What's next for the DCC Museum is, of course, the wish to continue with the music, to continue to understand the players better, to preserve them, hopefully one day build a new player. But what's really on my personal wish list is um, to have the DCC Museum travel the globe, meaning we have, because of the donations of all of the people in the interview and countless people uh, outside of the interview, now the largest collection of DCC-related materials, prototypes, original drawings, almost all the tapes. We're only lacking quite a, few, quite a few, but it needs to be seen and it deserves to be seen outside of Los Angeles, either in an exhibit that is permanent or temporarily. Hopefully it can start in the city of Eindhoven, I think where this great innovation started, but that's highly on our wish list. Ladies and gentlemen, I proudly dedicate DCC, there is still music left to write, to the men and women that worked so hard for nearly a decade at the Philips team and outsourced on the Philips team um, that started as a project decor and ended in a life-changing technology called Digital Compact Cassette. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. <laughs>